Hi, I'm Dr. James Wu, endocrine surgeon at UCLA Health. If you're getting ready for thyroid surgery or healing after one, you might be thinking about your voice. It's a really common concern. But today, I'll explain how we protect your voice during surgery, what you can do before and after, and why knowing the nearby nerves is key to keeping your voice strong during surgery. So let's just start with what's at risk with thyroid surgery. Your thyroid sits low in the front of your neck. Just behind it are two important nerves, the recurrent laryngeal nerves. These nerves help move your vocal cords. If one is injured during surgery, it leads to hoarseness, breathiness, or problems with swallowing or projecting your voice. That's why protecting the recurrent laryngeal nerves is one of our top priorities. But there's also another nerve that is just as important, especially if you use your voice for work. It's called the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. This nerve controls a muscle that helps tighten your vocal cords. And that's what gives your voice power and helps you reach higher notes when singing. If this nerve is injured, even if your vocal cords are moving normally, your voice might sound weaker or tire easier. You may not feel hoarse, but the voice won't sound quite right. That's why we're also protecting this nerve during surgery. We do this through careful dissection, experience, and sometimes nerve monitoring. Keeping all nerves safe gives you the best chance at a full voice recovery. So what can you do before surgery? Well, if you're a singer, teacher, speaker, or someone who just uses their voice a lot, tell your surgeon. In some cases, we may suggest a preoperative laryngoscopy. That's a quick exam that lets us check your vocal cords before surgery. It gives us a baseline and helps us guide the surgical plan. It also lets us talk about how much surgery you need because the less we remove, the lower the risk to your voice. And what about after surgery? Even when everything goes well, it's normal to have some voice changes for a few days or weeks. You might feel hoarse or notice your voice gets tired. That's often due to swelling from the breathing tube used during anesthesia, not necessarily nerve damage, and it usually gets better on its own. To help your voice heal, here are some things I recommend. After surgery, rest your voice for a few days. Don't shout or whisper, you can use it normally. Stay hydrated, drink plenty of water. Avoid smoking and too much caffeine, and just use your voice gently as it comes back. If your symptoms last, especially if your pitch, vocal strength, or range just seem off to you, we may refer you to a laryngologist or voice therapist. Voice therapy can help, and in some cases, there are treatments that restore normal vocal cord function if there has been a nerve problem. The bottom line is, your voice matters a lot, whether you sing, teach, or just want to speak with confidence. Protecting it starts with skilled care during surgery. And to recap, the recurrent laryngeal nerves move your vocal cords and we protect it closely. The external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve helps with pitch and power. It's just as important. Let your surgeon know if you use your voice for work as we can do a voice exam before surgery. After surgery, you may have mild hoarseness or fatigue, but it's usually temporary. Rest, hydrate, and reach out if problems arise after surgery. We're always here to help. If you're preparing for thyroid surgery and you want to talk more about your voice, we'd love to meet with you. Visit our website or give us a call to schedule a visit. I'm Dr. James Wu. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.